Let's put this all in a little perspective. Poor families like Laura's are not getting temporary assistance for needy family dollars. But for more than a decade, TANF money has been going to middle-class families looking for relationship help. Here are some recent numbers. In 2014, Oklahoma spent almost $200 million of TANF money. Promoting marriage and preventing out-of-wedlock pregnancy accounted for about 5% of that spending. Just a little more, 9%, went to cash assistance for poor families, what we think of when we think of welfare. I wondered what Laura Grennan, who was discouraged from applying for cash welfare, would think of these numbers. So I walked her through them. As far as as marriage counseling or classes, um, I don't know if that's the best way to spend a budget. I have a lot of questions, I think. And one is definitely the way that that budget is split up. So how did the welfare budget get split up this way? The answer comes down to four bullet points. And I even printed them out so I wouldn't stumble. This is Liz Schott, a senior fellow at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. She, for the last few years, has been obsessed with how and why states spend federal welfare money, your taxpayer money, like they do. She says it all comes down to these four bullet points buried in the 1996 welfare reform bill under the subheading purpose. They start off simple enough. First is providing assistance to needy families so children can be cared for in their homes. That's really your basic cash welfare that we've been talking about. And then there's the second bullet point, the second purpose. And the second purpose is about uh, promoting work preparation. And those two purposes really are what I think most thought that welfare reform was about. But then we get to purposes three and four, and things take a twist. The third purpose of TANF is preventing and reducing the incidence of -of out-of-wedlock pregnancies. And the fourth purpose, encouraging the formation and the maintenance of two-parent families. These last two purposes, focusing on marriage and preventing out-of-wedlock pregnancies, had been pushed for years by Republican and Democratic welfare reformers who were alarmed by the rise of single-parent families. Data shows that children with single moms are four to five times more likely to be in poverty than those in married families. But the fact that these two purposes, focusing on family formation, became such an integral part of the goals of welfare reform— That did not make a lot of headlines in 1996 when the welfare reform bill was passed. In fact, this emphasis on marriage and two-parent families didn't even get much notice from policy wonks like Liz Schott at the time. You know, I don't think anyone really paid attention in 1996. You read a statute, you read a bill, and there's all these whereases. That's just blah, blah, blah. Well, here it turns out that controls how the money can be spent. Those four bullet points were the closest the bill came to clearly defining how states could spend their block grants. And they opened the door to a whole world of possibility. Liz started to look more closely at just how each state spends that $16.5 billion allocated for needy families each year. She combed through the hundreds of annual reports that states have sent to the feds since welfare reform, describing where the money goes and which of the four purposes justifies that spending. When we started slicing them and dicing them, we began to see uh, very dramatic patterns. One of the biggest patterns? Nationwide, in the last few years, less than a quarter of welfare money is being spent on actual cash assistance for poor families. Less than a quarter on child care and work supports to help poor families find jobs. And as for the rest of the money, much of it goes to pretty much anything that might fit, even vaguely, under purposes three and four. Which brings us back to that wintry night in Oklahoma and to this conference room. So here's what I want you to do. In your workbook, your fun book, I want you to, on 56, 
where the teacher, paid by federal welfare dollars, is standing, where he's asking couples of various income brackets, from working class to upper middle class. What do you think your top three love styles are? And then what do you think your least three love styles are? But the really strange part? At the center of all this is a for-profit company. I'm Mary Myrick, and I'm the president of Public Strategies. Mary Myrick got her start working on political campaigns for Republican candidates in Oklahoma. But since 2001, her company, Public Strategies, has received more than $70 million in welfare money to run these relationship classes for Oklahoma. The whole idea took hold in the state in the late 90s, after a report came out looking at why Oklahoma had one of the lowest per capita incomes in the country. And it said all the things that an economic report would say that you have a hard time understanding, um, unless you're an economist. Kendi Cox also works at Public Strategies, running many of their marriage classes. She says at the end of the report, there was this one part that caught state leaders' attention. It said you have too much divorce, too many out-of-wedlock births. And up until that point, nobody had really made the connection between divorce and the economy. The report came out right around the same time as welfare reform kicked in and the new system of block grants that states could use for anything that broadly fit those four bullet points, those four purposes, including the last two, about marriage. And so our governor at the time met with our Department of Human Services and said, why don't we use a very small portion of that money to try some innovative things to strengthen families. And the Oklahoma Marriage Initiative was born. Over the years, they've offered so many different classes targeted at different demographics, Kendi can barely keep track. Forever for Real that is targeted to the needs of couples, whether they're engaged, married, seriously dating. Heart and Soul is crafted toward the needs of African-American couples and individuals. We have the Spanish version of Forever for Real, which is Reali para Siempre. I don't have that rolling of my R's down very well. And the list goes on. Some classes have been targeted towards low-income people, but most have been open to everyone, rich, poor, and in between. But since their inception, all of these programs have been funded in part by the federal government through TANF, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. And that's concerned some state lawmakers from both parties, including Democratic State Representative Jeannie McDaniel. Having healthy marriages is a worthy goal. I I understand kids need two parents. I support marriage. But at the same time, is this the best use of TANF funds? McDaniel says she was surprised when she first heard about how the Oklahoma Marriage Initiative was being funded. I had never heard about it. Even as a legislator. Even as a legislator. Who's on the Appropriations Committee doesn't know how the TANF dollars are spent. Right. That's true. You might think lawmakers like Jeannie McDaniel would have more involvement in where their own state concentrates its welfare spending. But that task falls to the administrators of the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. Jim Struby is the director of adult and family services there. He runs the cash assistance program in Oklahoma. And so I asked him. Does it concern you that so little money goes to basic assistance, to direct cash assistance? Um, yes. Do you have more to say? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Why? One of the things that I'm keenly aware of, low-income families are up against obstacles um, that middle class and upper class, obviously, um, families don't ever have to deal with. And so any amount of... Uh, support we can give them, I think, is important. I told him about the stories I'd heard from Laura Grennan and others who'd tried to sign up for welfare and been discouraged by caseworkers from applying, with comments like, you don't need it, you want it. He acknowledged this is a problem. We're aware that out in some of our communities there are workers who... Um, discourage participation either um, with the kind of comment you said or uh, they're just less than enthusiastic in the eligibility process. Ann Struby told me he thinks Oklahoma has spent 
too much welfare money on promoting marriage and healthy relationships, given the need for basic cash assistance in the state. I have to say, I'm surprised to hear you as a, somebody high up in, in the department saying that you don't think that your department spends enough on cash assistance. I'm surprised you're surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess just because if if anybody could could do something about it, wouldn't it wouldn't it be you and your department? Well, there are a lot of things to consider. I mean, one thing is that that we pay for a lot of other important things with TANF dollars. And that is the confusing, some would say infuriating paradox that lies at the heart of how welfare spending is structured today, not just in Oklahoma, but across the country. The money has become so flexible that everyone wants a piece of it to fund their state program. And as 5% here and 10% there get funneled to other state concerns, we're in a place where 20 years after welfare reform and all those welfare-to-work slogans, there's very little welfare money that goes towards what we think of as welfare or work. (laughs) 